so let us recapitulate our previous session discussion in previous session we have categorized roughness into four different orders first order second order third order and fourth order that is based on the cause of roughness means if roughness is produced due to machine tool error all the vibration of machine tool then that type of surface roughness is considered under for, uh, first order and second order if roughness is due to the characteristics of manufacturing process itself in selection of cutting parameters like speed speed depth of cut selection of manufacturing process like turning boarding grinding or if it is due to rupture of material then that roughness is considered under third order and fourth order roughness clear so again macro irregularities they are called as a secondary textures or waviness if surface roughness is is due to first order or second order due to the machine tool error then that roughness is like a wave that is like a secondary texture if roughness is due to third order or fourth order then that is called as a primary texture and that is called as a roughness that is micro irregularity so that is basic difference between secondary texture and primary texture primary texture is due to characteristics of process or rupture of material secondary texture is due to error in machine tool or the vibration of machine tool okay yeah. now we move further now here you can see when surface is indicated and if you look here this this peaks and valleys unevenness we are having so many peaks and valleys but now what is basic difference between waviness and roughness if you look here it that macro property means here we are having a one wave type of form here you can see so that wave it is look like this okay so that is called as a secondary texture means you are having considerable wavelength compared to peaks and valley then that is called as a secondary texture on this secondary texture this type of very close very dense peaks and valleys they are overlapped on this secondary texture that you can see here this is your waviness if you follow this cursor this is your waviness on that trace again we have so many peaks and valleys with very less wavelength with very less spacing if you just look here spacing between peak and valley and if you look spacing between peak and valley here then this spacing is on secondary texture and this spacing is on primary texture and peaks and valley distance of primary texture and this is peak and valley distance between uh, uh, peak and uh, 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 distance between peak and valley for waviness yeah so you can easily see in this graphical representation you can easily differentiate primary texture and secondary texture and your roughness is actually overall response so here you can see okay so overall response means combined value of primary and secondary texture that is nothing but roughness so that you can see here okay now we move further so roughness that is what a uh, very close peaks and valleys with very less wavelength you are having peaks and valleys here so this is called as a roughness waviness then this is called as a waviness if you ignore this this peaks and small peaks and valleys with very uh, less wavelength then this is what this is what called as a waviness it look like a wave so this roughness this entire profile is actually segregated here that is bifurcated here this is called as a roughness and this is called as a waviness and this com if you combine this two then you get finally this type of surface okay now sampling length or cut off length what is this sampling length and cut off length see suppose if i want to measure surface roughness of any surface any large component 
then as i told you these are the very uh, this roughness is a very micro property so we are actually performing roughness test on very small length that length on which you are performing roughness study that is called as a sampling length or cut off length okay so if you uh, i just guide you to one another slide which can give you idea about sampling length see this is this is what call as a wave actually if you just follow uh, this cursor then this is call as a wave on that wave we are having so many peaks and valleys then that is what call as a roughness okay so selection of sampling length is very much important if you look if i consider sampling length l2 then my roughness is look like this but if you consider sampling length l1 then these peaks and valleys they are considered as roughness so l2 and l1 if i compare l1 and l2 then l1 would be more rough compared to l2 due to very less wavelength here because peaks and valleys they are very close to each other and whenever peaks and valleys they are very close then that surface looks more rough and that's why primary textures they are more rough compared to secondary textures clear yeah? because primary textures they are having very less wavelength they are very close that peaks and valleys they are very close to each other clear yeah? so l1 if i measure because this this profile is of a particular surface this profile is of particular surface and if i consider l1 length only then i get more roughness value compared to l2 length okay so that's why selection of sampling length is important how much a uh, length you are considering in your study so if you look sampling length selection is actually depending on type of manufacturing process if you are using milling then you can prefer 0.75 mm or 2.5 mm or 7.5 mm actually sampling length that is varying from 0.8 to 25 mm if you are doing study above 25 mm then that cannot be considered as a roughness because you have considered very large sampling length so selection of sampling length should be in range of 0.8 mm to 25 mm and again means of the manufacturing process you can precisely select sampling length if you consider uh, blast sampling length then a possibility of getting a good precise surface roughness value clear so if you look here in case of milling you can go for 0.75 2.5 or 7.5 if you prefer 7.5 then that will consider large portion of your surface so that that can give you more precisely uh, value of roughness clear so actually sampling length that depends on length of a uh, uh, type of manufacturing process so from there you can select okay now next is about lay what is meaning of lay lay is because whenever you follow any manufacturing process you remove material in terms of chips clear yeah? so whenever you remove material by any cutting tool some some tool marks remain on the machine surface so do, those tool marks they are called as a lay let us see okay so here if you see in this table you can you can see uh, one isometric view then this one rectangular plate then this top portion may have this type of line marks or may have this type of straight line marks then this marks due to the cutting tool uh, movement on your component material that is called as a lay clear yeah? similarly if you if you look uh, here cross cross pattern means here you are having uh, marks in, in terms of cross for example if you follow knurling operation you might know knurling operation right so in case of knurling operation you get this type of this type of scratches on the machine surface clear yeah? so knurling so again lay pattern that depends on type of manufacturing process okay if you are following milling operation there more possibility of getting parallel or perpendicular lay 
if you are following a knurling operation then you get this type of cross pattern if you follow grinding operation or end phase milling operation then you get this type of multi directional uh, lay pattern so if you see this lay pattern it is multi directional uh, for example if you follow facing operation on lathe machine clear yeah, you move your cutting tool single point cutting tool from center of your cylindrical workpiece towards the outside radially uh, towards the periphery of workpiece so you get this type of circular tool marks on the face of cylindrical workpiece clear yeah? so that is called as a circular lay pattern clear yeah? so these are the different lay patterns and this is this symbol assigned to particular lay pattern if it is multi directional then we should use symbol capital m if it is circular lay pattern then capital c if it is radial lay pattern then capital r if it is cross lay pattern then cross sign is there if it is perpendicular lay pattern then perpendicularity symbol if it is parallel then two parallel lines that is the symbol now in drawings we are using this type of triangular symbol to indicate roughness surface roughness in drawing then in this location on the right side of this inverted triangle we are using symbol of lay pattern so this parallel line then it's a parallel lay pattern if you are using perpendicular symbol then lay pattern is perpendicular see uh, uh, this indication of lay pattern is very much important for example we are having this type of cross mark and if you measure uh, roughness along this direction and if you measure roughness along this direction then roughness value would be different so indication of lay pattern is very much important in your drawing because that will change roughness value actually so if you measure lay uh, roughness value along this scratches along the scratches then roughness value would be less but if you measure roughness perpendicular to the scratches in the direction perpendicular to the scratches then roughness value would be actually more clear yeah? so lay pattern indication is very much important okay so by using this type of symbolic representation we can instruct uh, inspection uh, that inspector who is measuring surface roughness in which direction that person has to measure surface roughness so lay pattern is very much important now we are going back to our discussion okay now next is main line and center line what is meaning of main line and center line to assign numeric value roughness numeric value we use reference lines so those reference lines they are called as a main line and center line there is a minor difference between center line and main line that we will discuss in our subsequent discussion here yeah, later i have entire slide to differentiate main line and center line so at that time we will be discussing difference strong difference between center line and main line but right now you can consider center line and main line as a reference line for assigning numeric value to roughness okay now methods of surface finish measurement now we are we just discuss different terms related to surface roughness now we will be discussing different methods by which we can measure surface roughness so surface roughness measurement they are broadly classified as as comparison method and direct instrument method comparison method is is like a gauge means we are comparing roughness of measuring surface against roughness of standard surface okay so this is qualitative way of comparison again we are not able to assign numeric value in comparison method we can only get idea our measuring surface that is having roughness more or less compared to reference surface for example if you are using slip gauge combination particular slip gauge combination as a standard and now any unknown length you compare against this slip gauge combination then if unknown you can only only judge whether unknown length is more than the slip gauge combination length or less than the slip gauge combination length but how much more or how much less that you cannot find out so similarly in case of sur uh, comparison method in surface roughness measurement we are having one reference surface which is having some roughness present and you take 
any unknown surface roughness and you compare roughness of unknown component against standard component so you can get idea that measuring surface is having roughness more or less compared to the reference surface roughness here yeah? so few methods are there qualitative methods which we will be discussing now one by one very first is a touch inspection this is the this is the uh, general method which which layman can understand because if if you slide your finger or on any rough surface then based on the sense of feel you can you can judge whether roughness is more or less so what we do actually you are having reference surface with you you slide your finger on that just get a feel of roughness on reference surface now uh, slide your finger on your measuring surface and then just compare your sense of feel means based on the sense of feel you can identify whether roughness of measuring surface is more or less compared to the reference surface clear so that is called as a touch inspection okay by sliding finger you can judge second is visual inspection see visual in, uh, visually differentiating roughness of two surfaces it's very difficult if roughness differentiation is very large between your reference surface and measuring surface then and then you can use visual inspection method otherwise it is very much difficult clear yeah? because uh, if you take two surfaces where you are having minor difference between roughness value then you cannot identify by visual inspection but yes if you are having very large uh, roughness difference between reference surface and measuring surface then by visual inspection you can you can give idea or you can get some idea of roughness but clearly or precisely you cannot compare by visual inspection roughness of any component by visual inspection touch inspection is more accurate compared to visual inspection in that case third is scratch inspection scratch inspection is very much similar to touch inspection but instead of your sense of feel you are using any soft material like rubber or soft plastic you are you are sliding that rubber or soft plastic against your reference surface so due to presence of peaks and valleys due to presence of roughness on that uh, reference surface some scratches will be produced on that soft material now you take similar another soft material and that you you slide on your measuring surface then due to the roughness present on measuring surface some scratches will be produced on that soft material now compare scratches on this soft material if scratches are more then you can easily say roughness is more if scratches are less compared to scratches present on ref, uh, reference surface then roughness of ref, uh, your measuring surface is less compared to the reference surface so by scratch inspection again more precisely so it's a combination actually scratch inspection is a combination of touch inspection and visual inspection in touch inspection we are sliding our finger instead of that you are sliding some soft material and then you are you are visually identifying based on the scratches present on the soft material roughness so visually you are identifying roughness by observing scratches on the soft material so that is scratch inspection next is microscopic inspection here you are using microscope actually by using a proper magnification you can take a microscopic view of reference surface and your measuring surface and based on the microscopic view you can qualitatively differentiate roughness next is about surface photograph you are taking photograph with high resolution cameras and then after those photographs of reference surface and measuring surface you are comparing okay if roughness is more then you will find more peaks and valleys in photograph so based on that you can you can differentiate your reference surface roughness and your measuring surface roughness next is about micro interferometer see in our curriculum we have uh, a separate topic for interferometer because interferometer itself a huge domain so at that time we'll be uh, later we'll be uh, discussing this interferometer because it's a vast domain so right now it is not possible but interferometer is again one optical technique 
by which you can you can compare roughness of reference surface and measuring surface later you will see in more detail interferometer next is wallet surface dynamometer see wallet surface dynamometer here we are using one pendulum for example suppose if i show you graphically then you have suppose uh, one surface this is your measuring surface uh, sorry your reference surface and now suppose uh, we take measuring surface this is suppose measuring surface now what you are doing you are you are taking one uh, pendulum suppose this is the pendulum and Now, suppose this is pendulum. So, this pendulum, this is the fixed end. This is the fixed end. And what you are doing, this is the fixed end. This is the uh, code of pendulum. And this pendulum is having soft material. What you are doing, you are giving some initial disturbance. You are giving some theta amplitude. And then you release it. Then every time in any oscillation, every oscillation, this pendulum, there's that slide on this surface. Then, due to the roughness present on uh, your surface, you get some resistance to the pendulum oscillation. So that now you can count number of oscillation made by pendulum. If, for example, on this black reference surface, if pendulum is making five oscillation, and same pendulum, if you are oscillating on your measuring surface, and if that that pendulum make three oscillation. Less, or, uh, less number of oscillations means more resistance to the movement of pendulum. When more resistance is possible, when the roughness of surface is more. So we can clearly say if more number of oscillations we are getting on our measuring surface compared to reference surface, then roughness of measuring surface is high compared to reference surface. If less number of oscillations we are getting on our measuring surface compared to reference surface, then roughness of measuring, surf, uh, measuring surface is high compared to the uh, reference surface. So if more number of oscillations, then surface is smooth, more finish. If less number of oscillations, then surface is rough, more coarse. Yeah? So that is what the basic principle of Wallach surface dynamometer. Now, next method. That is reflected light intensity. Now, reflected light intensity is again one optical technique. What we are doing, you are throwing monochromatic light source on rough surface. Then due to presence of peaks and valleys, that rough surface will, will scatter or reflect light source back. If more scattering is present, now you use one receiver to receive those reflected light rays. If surface is more rough, then scattering would be more. And due to more scattering, you get less light received on the receiving surface. Yeah? So based on the uh, light intensity is reflected from surface, you can judge roughness present on the measuring surface. If you are getting less light source received on receiver, then Roughness is more because scattering is more. That's why you're getting less light source received on receiver end. If you're getting more light reflected back on the receiver end, then surface is more finished. So this, this all techniques, they are the comparison method where you are comparing roughness of measuring surface against the roughness of standard surface, some reference surface. Yeah? So these techniques cannot give you uh, quantitative value of roughness they can give you qualitative comparison yeah you can just get idea whether roughness is more or less compared to the reference surface but how much more or how much less that you cannot identify 
using this technique clear yeah? so next method for that that is direct instrument measurement means we are using some direct instruments which can give you numeric value but again to get that numeric value you need to trace that roughness profile present on the surface for example uh, this type of roughness profile we need to trace which is present on the surface so this direct instruments they help to get this roughness profile from our object so so many different instruments are there so we'll discuss that but before that we'll discuss basic elements of this direct instruments okay so here in this diagram you can see this is your rough surface and this entire setup is your direct instrument the direct instrument is having one stylus you can see here skid or shoe then this is skid or shoe which is actually giving datum surface for roughness measurement so you are putting your your instrument on your object on your measuring surface then this skid that remains fixed that gives the uh, reference surface then second is stylus so this is called as a stylus which is directly making contact with your rough surface yeah so what you are doing you are you are sliding this stylus on your measuring surface along the direction along the measuring direction yeah with some sampling length as we have discussed you need to take sampling length in range of 0.8 to 25 mm yeah so you can select sampling length based on the uh, a uh, method used for manufacturing of that surface clear yeah? and that sampling length that much of length will be traveled by this stylus on your measuring surface and that stylus that will that will take mirror image of this peaks and valleys okay that will trace that profile after tracing that profile this is what the general specification of stylus we are taking radius of 10 micron because it's a micro inspection then next we are having amplifying device because as i told you this is micro property roughness measurement is a micro property so we are we are measuring it on very small length and those peaks and valleys that uneven surface is very that peaks and valleys they are very close to each other they are very dense so we are using here amplifying device what that amplifying device does this profile the stylus will take this profile and this amplifying uh device that will enlarge that profile that will that will uh, magnify that profile so that is the purpose of amplifying device next is recording device so recording device is nothing but memory of instrument that memory that stores profile of your object which is traced by this stylus stylus jo profile trace karega usko uh, amplifying device uh, usko recording device store kar lega and the last is analysis of trace see analysis of trace is the mathematical operations because once you you record profile of your workpiece now you apply different mathematical equations to find out numeric value here yeah? so that to get the numeric value we are using using this uh, this module analysis module of any instrument that that instrument that will that analysis device that will assign numeric value to the object uh, numeric value to the object surface roughness yeah so that is about different elements of uh, this direct measuring instruments and these are the different instruments now very first is a tomlinson surface meter it's a mechanical instrument so we'll be discussing three basic instrument one is a tomlinson second is telesur and third is micro uh, macro so these three instruments will discuss in our next lecture we end here our today's session so now we'll be discussing your queries one by one